My apologies. What was supposed to be a one-part video became a two-part video because somebody called. I always like to put my phone on airplane mode before I start recording because people usually call when I'm in the middle of making a video. As it is, shout out to Sekhmet Ka, my aunt. That's actually the person who called while I was recording this video. So now I'll start fresh from where I left off. On outside of this material universe, you have a ring of earth. That ring of earth is 10 times the diameter of this universe. Outside of the ring of earth, you have a ring of water, which is 10 times wider than the ring of earth. Outside the ring of water, you have a ring of air, which is 10 times wider than the ring of water. Outside the ring of air, you have a ring of fire, which is 10 times wider than the ring of air. Outside the ring of fire, you have a ring of ether, which is 10 times wider. So as you're getting a picture is that everything is a fractal, everything is related in a fractal and, and it's giving you a sense of sacred geometry, how this universe is constructed. So I wish the idiots who run their mouth and talk about there's no such God, there's no way you can get such a complicated universal structure by chance. Everything is designed in this universe mathematically. So if you are a fool, if you do not believe in God, that is your business. But I please ask you to keep your mouth shut and don't share your foolishness with other there's Lord Jagana, very good friend. Dearest to my heart. If you're a fool and you don't know, don't talk about the Big Bang Theory. Don't tell me the universe is 13 billion years old. You know nothing. You can't even create a blade of grass. And a blade of grass did not evolve by itself. But if the universe did come with no intelligent design, then why is it? I love these cars called Audi. Why is it that an Audi can't just build itself outside my house in front of my crib right now? There's enough elements, you know. You know the heart, right? The heart, I, I watched the Olympics. One of the commercials was saying that we have, what, two milligrams of gold in our heart? So we understand that you are a microcosm of the macrocosm. Whatever's out there in the universe is also in you, in limited capacity. So all of these elements of the universe is already in you. I got gold in me. I got all of the, I got all of the materials to make an Audi inside my body. So why an average human, why we don't grow cars inside of our body? Why do we grow cancer? Why do we grow tumors inside of our body and not cars? And a cancer and a tumor, they have a more or less random growth pattern, right? So that's nature. Nature is very random. But when you have an intelligent source behind nature, then you first get structure. And the most intelligent person in this universe was the man who manifested in a state of triple stage darkness named Lord Brahma. And he was inspired by a vibration coming from Krishna's flute, which condensed into sound, which millions and trillions of years later was written down in the form of the Vedas. Whatever you have in the form of Vedic literature is actually a derivative of the first sound in the beginning was the word that gave Lord Brahma the impetus to create the universe. So now we understand that this universe is composed of certain elements and it's composed in a certain particular way. And the speculators don't have no knowledge of that because they try to do everything from their own mental platform. Remember in the previous video, we said the mind is one of the material elements. Material things can be destroyed, changed or altered. So therefore, what my mind tells me today might not be the same thing my mind is telling me from 20 years from now. I can't depend on that. I can't even depend on DNA science. You know what DNA really is? DNA is a chart that allows you to live out your karma. If you have a destiny to be very smart or very sexual or very beautiful, or if you have a destiny to get real sick and disease ridden, at the age of four, it's all there in your DNA already. So the DNA is just helping you to manifest your karma, which is another material or temporary element. 
So I'm doing this to share with people that there is a supreme source of information and it's available for all living entities. And I'm begging you not to sell yourself short. We don't have a lot of time left. I always like to point that out. We only got 400,000 years left in this Kali Yuga. And right now I'm reading a book called Sri Krishna, the Lord of Love, in which, in which Premanandi Bharati is explaining that even this, the duration of this Kali Yuga is cut short because Krishna came at the beginning of this Kali Yuga or at the end of the last Dwapara Yuga. And because of some transcendental interaction between his energy and the, and, and the atoms of this universe, even the Kali Yuga time of trouble will be cut short. And we do know that it's cut short because Sri Advaita appears at the at, during every Kali Yuga, I believe. During every Kali Yuga or every Divya Yuga, all I know is that Sri Advaita appears on this planet more often than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna himself. And Sri Advaita is very interesting. He His identity is actually Mahavishnu and Sadashiva. So Advaita, if you chant Hare Krishna under the auspices or the guidance or the blessing of Sri Advaita, you start to grow something called Vaikuntha Prem or love, the love that is displayed, the emotion that is displayed in the world of no anxiety. That is an eternal world, and you don't grow old or sick, and you're eternally beautiful. But it is lacking in certain substances, the higher tastes, like the love between a man and his wife, or the love between God and his servants, it's lacking in that world. The flavor of life that makes life fully enjoyable is lacking in Vaikuntha. In Vaikuntha, you take the personality of a servant of the Lord in awe and reverence. But in Goloka Vrindavan, the highest world, if you chant Hare Krishna under Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then you get something called Goloka Prem, Vraja Prem. Vraj is the land where Tulsi Devi dwells. That's over there in India. The physical counterpart of the spiritual, spiritually manifested eternal world is located in Vrindavan. And that's the kind of love you want to look for, Vrindavan. Because that's the kind of love, the unlimited love, where you will do anything for your beloved and your beloved will do anything for you. There's no, in, in so much there's no separation between the lover and the beloved. But in Vaikuntha, there's separation in so much that I am here priest and there is Lord Vishnu and I must serve him with love and awe and I must serve him with awe and reverence because he's so great he's so this is Maha Vishnu you know this is Karnadakasai Vishnu this is the original supreme source but when you get to Vaikunt when you get to Goloka Vrindavan that's when you actually get to play with God so it's a whole different ball game so once again the material elements are set up like plates or discs around a spindle. And outside of that, you have concentric rings that are 10 times bigger. So listen, no matter how smart you are, or no matter how powerful of a yogi you are, you're not gonna break out of this universe with the mere force of your mind, your intelligence, or how many books you read. Even if you were able to break out of this material world, Way, 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 way beyond this material world, you will come to a place called Maheshdam, or the world of Shiva. And that's not even the spiritual world yet, but it shows you how significant Lord, the auspicious Lord Shiva is, because his name means auspicious. And he's not a regular living entity like me and you. He is not Vishnu Tattva. He is not Lord Vishnu. He is not one of Vishnu's direct expansions. But he is neither Jiva Tattva. He is not the science of me and you. He's a separate category altogether. Beautiful person, that Lord Shiva. And then you go way, 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 way beyond the world of Mahesh Dham. And then you just get to the glare the external light that's glaring off of Krishna's skin. And inside that light called Brahma Jyoti or Nirvana, inside that light is the spiritual Vaikuntha planets. 
But you still have to go beyond that to get to Goloka Vrindavan, the real world. That's the world, everybody. But really, the goal of life is not even Krishna. The goal of life is Krishna Prem. The goal of life is to reactivate your love of God. Because when you reactivate your love of God, you are now immersed in an ocean of nectar. And there is no feeling like loving God. Because remember, Krishna is not like me and you. He reciprocates fully, cent, percent, percent. There is nothing you can... I remember... God, how could I forget his name? It's a Prabhupada disciple. He's from Trinidad. Black body. Actually, he's Sudarshan Shakradas's, um Shiksha Guru. And he's also Bhakta Joe's Shiksha Guru. And his mind slips me. But I'll tell you something funny that happened the other day in Astoria. I'm in a car, I'm riding around Astoria, and I'm having a discussion about something transcendental or something spiritual. And what do you know? We roll down the block, and I see him painting. I see this disciple of Prabhupada painting. You know, he was painting some iron gates. His name's B B B B B Bashara? Bishara. Prabhu Bishara, right? That's his name. And I remember one day he said, matter of factly, in the basement, in the restaurant at the Brooklyn Temple. And he looked like this, he went like this. He said, don't think that you give Krishna something and you don't get something. And he stopped and looked like this. Don't think that you can give Krishna something and you don't get something in return. So this love of God is what you wanna reawaken because that's the key to getting everything. Until you have love of God, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be honest with you. You don't really have nothing. You don't have no possessions. You don't got no son, no daughter. You don't own one atom in your son or daughter's body. Neither can you stop them from dying at the moment of death. There's nothing sad about the material world. Except for the fact that this is a place. There's always going to be some form of suffering in the material world. What reasonable soul will want to remain continuing to reincarnate? Unless you're doing it for the love of God, then that gives all purpose. So on this day, Janmashtami, the appearance day of Krishna, I ask you all to look within, like the people from the age of Satya Yuga. In Satya Yuga, everything was transparent and illuminated because we lived internally. In today's world, everything is external. People don't care about what's in that lady's heart. They just care about the size of our butt and our breasts. They don't care about what's in that man's heart. They just care that he has millions of followers and millions of dollars in the bank account. He must be a man of God because he got a lot of money. Once you got money, oh, they know God blessed him. Reverend Creflo Dollar, all y'all idiots. I called you an idiot. I'll say it to your face. All y'all prosperity pastors, all you prosperity gurus, Giving these people cures for material diseases. Helping them out because ghosts are challenging them. Ain't none of y'all talking about love of God. So ain't none of y'all talking nothing important. When you're ready to see me, see me. Haribo.